All right. So let's finish up here by doing a volume application. All right. So we want to find the volume of a solid region bounded by the surface z equals y e to the minus xy, then the planes x equals 0, x equals 2, y equals 0, y equals 3, and z equals 0. All right. So what does that do? What does that look like? All right. So let's look at what this region looks like in the xy plane first. Right? So these planes, x equals 0, x equals 2, y equals 0, and y equals 3, well, those kind of function as walls to a room, if you kind of imagine it. And what does that look like in the xy plane? What does their intersection with the xy plane look like? Well, it's simply just a rectangle. Okay? It's just going to be, here's y equals 3, here's x equals 2, here's x equals 0, and y equals 0. Right? So we just get this rectangle here. Right? So the planes are these big things that go in and out here. Right? And then what is z equals 0? Well, z equals 0 is actually this picture right here. So you can imagine z equals 0 is the floor, right? Now, since this function here is always positive on the rectangle here, because e to the minus xy is always positive, and here y is positive, so you can imagine this as sort of the ceiling. So you have z equals 0 down here. You have the four x and y planes over here. And then you have that surface as kind of a roof, right? So if we want to find the volume, well, we have to integrate this function over this rectangle. Right? So double integral, y e to the minus xy. Right? And now let's decide on an order. So let's do y first. Right? So y will go from 0 to 3. Right? And y will always measure from the very bottom to the top. And then dx comes next, and x will go from 0 to 2. Right? And x always goes from left to right. All right. <coughs> so, well, all right. We have this integral here, and we could do this. This would require integration by parts. But... Well, instead of doing that, what we could also do is just switch the order of integration. All right? And this will be a recurring theme later on. So since it's Fubini's theorem over a rectangle, it's nice and easy to just go ahead and switch these guys. All right? It might sometimes be a little more difficult than that, but not over a rectangle. All right? So now we have this. And now it's pretty straightforward what to do. So first we integrate with respect to x. And we get y. Integral of that with respect to x is going to be minus 1 over y, e to the minus xy. Uh, then the bounds from 0 to 2, dy. Right, so let's come over here to continue this. Integral from 0 to 3. Well, the nice thing here is those y's cancel out. And we still keep the minus 1 there. So we get uh, negative 2. Oh, sorry, no 2. Just negative. Uh, negative e to the minus 2y. Right? minus negative e to the 0 dy. And that is just, of course, negative e to the minus 2y plus 1. All right? And now we integrate that. Well, that is just integrate this, and you get 1 half e to the minus 2y right, plus y. And then we evaluate that from 0 to 3. All right. So this gives us 1 half 
e to the minus 6 plus 3 minus 1 half e to the 0 plus 0. So that gives us 1 half e to the minus 6 and then 3 minus a half, so plus 5 halves. Right. And that's it for this. Right. So just a word in case you know you might have guessed this. Um, usually when you're deciding how to order your integral, you look at the function and see you know, which way is it easier to integrate first, x or y. In this case, it would have been smarter to start by setting up the integral with respect to x. But I wanted to point out that if you're giving an, given an integral, you can always try and switch the order of integration to help you integrate it. All right? So hopefully this all made sense, and I'll see you in the next video.